Hello, this is Ujwal, uh, guest designing today on the Lulubu blog. Uh, I am part of their birthday celebration this month and I will be sharing uh, a little bit about my color books, how I color, what I color with. So today I am uh, working with this uh, book called Creative uh, Cats. It's from uh, Creative Heavens and is illustrated by Marjorie and um, the designs are basically all cat based and there are about 32 designs in the book that you can color they're all one-sided that is one important thing that i really like so in case there are bleeds or i mess up a sheet i don't mess up the one behind it then um, the pages are perforated on the edge so if you want you can take them off easily and display your artwork that is another thing that is, um, I think, really nice. The designs are intricate. They have lots of, of course, there are cats, but then there are lots of other uh, uh, flowers and butterflies. And then um, there are space-related images. And then there are aquatic uh, images like fishes and stuff along with the cats. So that is something really nice. And another thing is that the paper here is a little bit thicker than the regular printer pa paper which uh, the most of the books are printed on uh, so I like that and um, of course my favorite medium is to watercolor so here I have uh, my color palette that I made uh, using the normal stationers watercolor swatches and I'm using a water brush to color it in uh, so this is my actual speed of coloring I will be speeding up the coloring process in the rest of the video so uh, it doesn't take a lot of time um, but this is my actual speed so please don't get intimidated with the speed that I'll be coloring on in the latter part of the video <clears throat> so um, watercolors work really well on this uh, of course, you have to control the amount of water that you put in. You cannot do a whole lot of blending and add a whole lot of water. Uh, you have to uh, restrict yourself a little bit and just do um, regular kind of uh, um, coloring instead of, you know, doing a lot of blending and shading and doing wet on wet techniques. You definitely can't do that with these uh, papers. But uh, yes, other, other than that, the watercolors work really well. You can experiment with any kind of watercolors you like. You can choose a high quality uh, artist grade watercolor or you can uh, go for something that's student grade and just have fun coloring in. So uh, for me, uh, I like using this color palette because it's very thin and it's easy to carry I can just tuck it inside the book and take it along wherever I'm going and all I need is a water brush uh, and again if you find it difficult to control the water uh, with your water brush uh, you can definitely use a regular paint brush and a bowl of water uh, I am used to a water brush so I like working with it. I find it easier and non-messy and I don't end up uh, uh, you know spilling water in, from the bowl everywhere. So I work with water brush but it is definitely your choice um, uh, and you can use a regular paint brush. You don't need an expensive one for this. Um, so I like water coloring and I'll show you in a, a bit that the paper this paper holds a small amount of water really well it doesn't be bleed through so that is a good thing um, and uh, other than that you can again experiment with a lot of things I I think uh, coloring books are meant for relaxing uh, you know you don't really have to be an artist or you don't really have to have expensive supplies to start coloring they are just supposed to be your um, you know just supposed to be your me time kind of an uh, activity that you can do in a uh, you know on the go on the run if you're traveling you can just take the book along and travel and uh, here I just wanted to show you that how the paper looks from the back it is it does warp up a little bit but that's okay it doesn't bleed through and that is what is important for me at the moment so uh, and to protect the other page I always keep a scrap piece of paper in between the pages that I'm coloring in uh, that way my page behind it uh, or the page after it doesn't get ruined 
also if you are uh, finding it difficult to uh, figure out how you want to color you can always use the colored images on the front and the back uh, as your reference and go from there so I decided to color my um, kitty in a gray color so I'm just picking up some black and diluting it a bit with water applying a little bit black on the edges and then just I'll just pulling it uh, pulling the water in on the rest of the face so this is just something uh, super fast that I just wanted to show you how I colored and um, you can see that I'm just applying the dark color on the edge where I want it to be the darkest and then I'm just pulling the color inside the face uh, with just a little bit of water so I think this is a great way and again you can see that that's how the cat looks there I decided to use the same colors uh, for the face and um, again these are just meant for relaxing or maybe practicing your coloring skills but other than that um, uh, you don't have to really take them very seriously they're just meant to have some fun relax and spend a little bit of me time uh, I color when I'm really stressed out I have a lot of work to do when I'm I just can't concentrate all I do is I pick up a book and I start coloring and I just color in for five minutes or ten minutes and uh, I immediately feel very relaxed and very focused so that is how I color but um, yeah again I've seen people really stressing about color books and I have no idea why I, uh, I think you know just pick up a book just choose a book that you like uh, choose a coloring medium that you're comfortable in and just get going so um, yeah and you can see that I have my uh, I have colored the face of the kitty here and I really like how it looks um, so you can just go in and color and again for watercolors you can even use your uh, zig clean color markers if you have them you can use distress inks you can use distress markers you can use a whole lot of different mediums if you want to I've also seen people uh, you know put a layer of gesso on the paper and then color uh, to give the page um, you know to make the page a little bit more sturdier uh, but I think uh, that's just a whole lot of work because uh, you know these are again these are meant for you know just having fun and relaxing I'm not going to um, frame them or uh, you know give them as gifts I am just going to keep them with me and just color when I like so I find gessoing pages to be a uh, uh, you know another added task that I don't want to do on a coloring book but if you want to by all means you can and you should if you want to so uh, that is another option that is there so you can just give a thin coat of gesso on the whole page and then start coloring in that way it will take the color better and the color won't bleed through uh, as much as it does now so there you go I have my kitty all colored I added some background as well uh, and uh, Next thing that I want to show you that I really like coloring with are my watercolor pencils. I have Faber Castell pencils, a pack of 12 and these are really nice to get into all the little detailed areas where you might find it difficult to use a paintbrush. So uh, all you have to do is use a watercolor pencil, you know, sharpen it up a bit and so that you can reach the fine areas and just uh, apply it like a regular pencil and then go over it with your water brush please excuse my daughter's hand there she was um, yeah really excited about all the colors and uh, was telling me which color to go where so anyways uh, just color in your image like a, like you would with a normal pencil and then um, go over it with uh, um, with water with a paintbrush and you will have your watercolored image um, a very neat watercolored image uh, in minutes so that is what I did with the butterfly I colored it in with uh, the pencils color watercolor pencils and then I'm just going over the whole thing with my water brush make sure you wipe your uh, brush tip in between um, when you change to a different color so that it does the colors don't get contaminated and this is again one of the easiest way to color intricate designs like this where you might find it difficult to go to the little details and intricate areas 
so another thing that I like doing with my uh, pages is adding some white adding some details with a white pen you can use a white gel pen or I sometimes use a Faber Castell pit artist pen and I think it just adds a little more to the page so you can see that I have added some dots to the ear and uh, some to the eyes and I just add some details here and there so of course the next medium is the color pencils these are the uh, easiest I think and uh, the most popular uh, for coloring books I have a pack of uh, Stedler, uh, Stedler uh, Luna pencils it's a set of 24 pencils and it wasn't very expensive I think about 300 rupees or so so um, I'll show you an image that I started working uh, with the pencils. I was just trying that, trying it out and testing. So here is the image that I started working with pencils. And again, even with pencils, you can get a lot of dimension uh, if you just, uh, you know, um, color and write, and you apply a little bit of. You vary the pressure that you apply by coloring. You can get really good shades and details uh, with pencils as well. So here I just wanted to show you how I color uh, most of the time. The first thing that I do is I just lay down a layer of base color. Uh, I apply very little pressure when I am doing my base layer. So the color is light and it's not too dark to correct if I want to change it um, later. And then I go in with uh, my darker color and add some shading to the areas that I want them to be. So in this case, in the flower, I wanted some darker areas uh, on the inside and on the outside of the petal petals. So I just added a little bit of red. And then I go back again in with my base color. This time I apply a little bit more pressure. And I go over the whole petal again and just blend the colors out. And this gives me a really nice, neat, uh, shaded effect on the uh, whole thing. So uh, I like doing this and I do this often. And this is a great way to uh, achieve a little bit of shading and dimension on your uh, projects if you're coloring with colored pencils. So uh, again, color pencils are non-messy, easy to carry. Uh, you can take them along anywhere. So this is the look that I get when you color with pencils. And I think it's pretty nice. Again, and next, uh, there is there are, of course, alcohol markers. I am not into alcohol markers a lot. So I don't even own a whole lot. I have some Spectrum Noir uh, and I have some Chameleon pens. But if you have Copics and you like coloring with Copics, you can do that. It is going to bleed, of course. But uh, uh, it's not impossible. You can still uh, do it. Just protect your page behind. You can just use a scrap piece of paper uh, underneath the image that you are coloring. And uh, that will make sure that the color doesn't be bleed onto the next page. So uh, I'll just give a quick demo on how I color with markers if I have to. Uh, I will just be coloring the base page. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll just be coloring the uh, face of this kitty with my markers. I'll not be doing a whole lot of blending because again when you're blending, you're putting in more ink and that will make the bleed even messier. The bleed uh, on the back side even messier and the color might seep through. So I am just going to do a very light coat and not a whole lot of blending or shading on the cat. And I'm using some, I have the colors in pastel hues uh, from Spectrum Noir, the set that I have are pastel hues and I think they work really well for the skin tone. So I'll just color in with my markers. And again, there are a whole lot of markers. There are tom Tombow markers. Then there are some Copic, Copic multi-liner pens. There are Steadlier fine liners. There are, of course, Copic markers. And there are uh, Mary markers. And whole lot of different markers. If you have, you have anything, you can just try it out. The best way to do it would be to just uh, choose a page. Maybe the one that you don't like that much in the whole book. And just test out all the mediums that you like coloring with on that one single page so you know what works well um, on that particular book and what doesn't and you can just keep a little list of things a little list of mediums that work well on your book that way you can just grab them and just go to you know go to town with coloring so here you can see that I have a really nicely colored face I added a little bit of um, rosy 
uh, rosy nails to the mouth and the I'll be adding to the cheeks and uh, I did try to add a little bit of highlights on the sides of the face but I was really afraid I didn't want um, the colors to bleed through and I'll show you in a moment how the back side of the um, page looks. I also added some highlights for the nose so it is more defined and and that is it that is how I colored in the image with markers so it's easy it's quick but again as you can see I even have some color on my scratch piece of paper uh, that is what really worries me when I'm working with uh, alcohol markers on uh, coloring books but results of course are really cute so I hope you enjoyed I hope you'll give uh, coloring books a try they are really relaxing and um, they're a great way to just uh, you know uh, spend some me time do what you love and um, yeah don't get too serious about it just grab a book that you like grab some markers grab some pens and just start coloring and definitely keep the expectations real they are not very expensive and they are just meant for fun so thank you so much for watching today and thank you for Lulubu to for having me here and I hope you enjoyed the video thank you